family, welcome to the locker room where foundational teaching takes place. Good evening, God bless you. Come on in, like and share. We'll be getting started promptly on tonight for our lesson. Temples for God. Those of you who are on the email listing, you've already gotten your lesson by email by yesterday. You've gotten your lesson, Temples for God, part six, and we're continuing part six in completion. On tonight, this is our Principles of Praise and Worship series, and it has been a blessing. Yes. It has been a blessing. So go ahead and get your likes and your shares in. Say hello. As Apostle says, dust your feet off at the door. Amen. The principles of praise and worship. Good evening, Sister Wilson. Sister Spencer, Sister Smith, God bless you all for tuning in, coming straight in, sharing. God bless you. The contest is still going on for the most shares for the month of September. Y'all seen the, the uh, winners for the previous months for July and August. So you can be the winner for September for the most shares. Once you share, hashtag share. In just a moment, we'll ask Apostle Clay to open us up with prayer and we're going to jump right in to our lesson. Jump right into our lesson. I'm so glad that y'all jump in on time because I love being on time and even more so, I like getting out on time. I praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Your time is valuable. My time is valuable. So we want to set up good habits of jumping in on time so that we can use our time wisely. A few more seconds and we're going to pray. Let us look to the Lord, most gracious the heavenly Father. We honor you once again yes. for who you are. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence. We thank you for a mind to serve you, God, to humble ourselves before you. Father, I ask that you put your stamp of approval on this classroom tonight while we're in the locker room where foundational teaching takes place. Yes. Father, we pray that you send an anointing that makes learning your word easy, teaching your word easy, God. We bind the enemy on every side who may try to come in and interrupt or hinder yes, what God. you have for us on today. We yes. praise you. We ask that you speak to praise our teacher and speak you. through her Thank you, Lord. to us. In Jesus' Thank name. You, God. Amen. 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 Can we just lift our hands wherever we are and just give God praise? Can we have just a moment of focused attention? This is praise and worship, the principles of praise and worship, a moment of unfocused worship on our Lord. Yes. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we praise you. God, we give you glory. We honor you yes. as Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and the end of everything. God, we lift you up now. Yes, Lord. We magnify your holy name. Yes, Lord. There's nobody greater than you. So, God, we take this moment. This moment. Just to say thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, God, just for being God. Yes. We honor you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. Amen. God is good. Yes, he is. God is good. Once again, we welcome you to the locker room where foundational teaching 
takes place. Some of y'all were in sports. Y'all know about that locker room. Yeah, yeah, Apostle, yeah, yeah. he's a definite sports fan, an yeah. avid sports, sports <laughs> fan. And he knows about that locker room. Uh, all, that's where all the training, all the sweat really goes into. When we come out for the game, we should already be prepared yeah. when it's time to live that thing out. But the locker room, that's when all the head bumping goes on. The grit and the grind. The grit and the grind. You know, all the stuff that go on. The locker room is more important than actually stepping out on the field. Yes. Because we can just go straight to the field. Oh, and make a big mess. Make a big mess. We're doing what we want to do. We don't know what to do, how to do. We can hurt ourselves. We can hurt our team. Wow. All That's that. revelation. Yeah, so the locker room is vitally important. When we're doing things wrong, we can hurt ourselves and others. Mm -hmm. So this series is the principles of praise and worship. Yes. We've been talking about praise. We started out and we're going to finish on next week some words for praise. What is praise? We're going to finish that out. Mm -hmm. We've been on altars for God, uh, building altars, sending up worship, sacrifice for mm -hmm. him. Now we're on temples for God, giving some examples of the direction, the specific direction, direction that God gave for building the temples. Yes. So if we're in this principle of praise and worship series and we don't follow the principles because principles are laws or commands, mm -hmm. orders. If we don't follow the principles that God has put forth in this word, that means just like in the locker room, if we're not paying attention and doing things right by protocol, by guidance and direction, we can hurt ourselves or others. Right. So we could be hurting our own lives, our own purposes, by not properly praising and worshiping God. Yeah, we can cause more harm than good. Wow. We might have good intentions mm -hmm. on wanting to help the team win. We mm -hmm. might have the ability or the potential yeah. to do it, but if we haven't been properly trained on what specific tasks we are to do once we get in the face of opposition, yeah. we can blow the whole thing up. He just said something about potential. Even in science, we understand that potential means nothing if it's not put to work. If mm -hmm. that energy, potential is stored up energy. That's all it is. Right. So right. if that energy is not put to work, it's only potential. Yeah. If that energy does nothing, nothing happens. Nothing if happens. it's not put to work, we are the ones who are in charge of putting ourselves to work, yes. putting the energy, the, the power, the anointing, that he's placed on the inside of us, the gifts, the calling mm -hmm. that God has put into us, it's our responsibility yes. to make sure that that goes to work in the earth. Yeah. It's our responsibility. So with that being said, let's jump into the completion of our Temples for God lesson. These lessons could go on and on and on, but I've tried to uh, excerpt the main part mm -hmm. of this to make an impression on our lives so that we can remember this. It, it doesn't mean anything if we go through these lessons and we don't remember and apply what God is saying right. about the principles of praise, of praise and worship. If we don't take anything away from this that's powerful in our lives, I've not really done a good job teaching Right. if we, if we are not able to apply it. So the temple's for God. Let's finish this. God's presence is the only essential ingredient for worship. Mm -hmm. God's presence is the only essential ingredient for worship. So uh, last week we were, last week and the week before we were in 1 Kings chapter 25. Mm -hmm. uh, God's presence is the only essential ingredient for worship. Our praise and other elements of our meetings or our services mm -hmm. must lead us into the presence of God. If they don't, there is no reason to do them. So in all of our Sunday morning, Saturday night, Friday night, Thursday night, all of our meetings, all of our services, all of our revivals, all of our anniversaries, all of our usher board programs, all of our choir concerts, mm -hmm. all of those, I'm listening. if they don't bring us into the presence of God, we may as well not have them. Wow. Our services the purpose of our services are not to raise money. 
The purposes of our services are not just to come see each other. The purposes of our service are not to see who's the best dresser, to see what he has on today or what she has on today. That is not the purpose. If our services are not designed and guided towards leading us into the presence of God, we're at a, at a, at a loss. Listen, uh, teacher, that's one thing. That's one thing that gets me. You know, the spirit of excellence. Mm -hmm. We should operate in the spirit of excellence as best as possible. As best as possible. And it and it bothers me when we as the children of God have a problem with an individual or individuals mm -hmm. who are pulling on us to present excellence. You said pulling on us. Yeah. Yeah. To present excellence versus uh, just something. And well, I did it. No, no, no. This is not good enough. The spirit of, as the children of God, we should want to give him our very best. And if and, and sometimes I may think I'm doing my best, mm -hmm. but if I have a leader, if I have wow. someone who has insight that God has placed in that position, ordained because we have we have the fivefold ministry. That's good. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Mm -hmm. And so there may be an individual that God has assigned to my life mm -hmm. to bring out. The, the better best. man, yes. the best of me, or the better yes. man that I know not of. That's I, good. I have not seen. Have not experienced I that haven't, person. I haven't experienced. I've had a good. glimpse of, have a glimpse of that individual, maybe dream of that individual, but or, or or didn't think it was possible for me. Period. Right. But by us having righteous leadership, that's good to pull on us. Why? Because God operate. He said I, He does things decent and, and in order. In order. And we saw, serve the most excellent God. Mm -hmm. We serve a best God. The best God. Okay. <laughs> and so we should give him our best. And sometimes, I just have to say it like this, sometimes our best is not good enough. We have, wow. to, reach, we have to reach deeper. Mm -hmm. we have to There's reach an deeper. anointing down on the inside of each of us. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when we tap into that thing, it takes us to places we could normally not even go on our own. Yeah. We couldn't attempt it. We couldn't fake it. We couldn't put on. There is an anointing down on the inside of us that I, I, I know it. Even when I'm ministering in song or ministering uh, in the word, there is an anointing down on the inside. And I have to get deep enough and tap into that thing where it's not just me anymore. Uh, I'm not just using my gift per se. God is using that gift, taking that thing to another level, and I'll be like, "Wow!" Yeah, it's it's we it's a such thing as self discipline, okay? Mm -hmm. And sometimes we patty cake ourselves and wow. baby ourselves, like, "Oh, we all right, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm all I, right, right here. I, uh, I'm better than I used to be, mm -hmm. but that's not our very best." Mm -hmm. And so I'm one of my biggest critics, y'all. I, I I watch different things. I look at different things and try to figure out how can I do better. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to give God the best. Mm -hmm. I want God to look the finest. Are y'all wow, hearing what I'm saying? That's good. And so I'm figuring out ways how can we do this better so that God could be even more glorified. Mm -hmm. How can, you know what I'm saying? It, mm -hmm. It's not about me. I'm just a tool. And so when people look at me, I want them to see Jesus. I want them to see mm -hmm. the blessings of God on my life. Mm -hmm. When they when they experience anointed praise and worship mm -hmm. ministries, I want them to experience the that's glory good. That's good. of God. When they see that, when they when y'all see this logo that's right here behind me mm -hmm. in the studio, you all know when that church right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, they on fire for God. Mm -hmm. Or oh, the older saints was calling us the jumping church. The jumping church. <laughs> we the jumping church. They said we go, we we going over into the jumping church. Yeah. You know, and so my church where I grew up, that's what they call us the jumping church. They, the jumping church. And so what am I saying? We have to give God our very best. Not just we're dealing with praise and worship. This is it. But we're not but praise and worship is not a song. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Clay mentioned that worship is a lifestyle. It is. Praise is celebrating God, thanking him, not only with our mouth, but how we live. He said, the people say they love me with their mouth, but their hearts are far from me. And so how, how I conduct my business, Inspired Vision Consultant, is praise unto God since I'm a child of God. Y'all, one of my <laughs> favorite apostles next to Apostle Clay. Okay, you say that. Say one that. of my favorite apostles said today, 
He said, if what you're doing is just for money, you missed it. Yeah. yeah. If you're not doing it for deliverance, yeah. then you missed it. So my business that I run, yeah, it, we run a business to make money. But guess what? In the end, every person who comes our way, we're able to offer them a rounded service so that they get deliverance out of where they were into something better. Brother Adam said, to do your best, you have to come out of your norm. That is right, Brother Allen. I like that. Come out of our norms, our comfort zones. How you doing, Brother Albert Heath? Uh, the funny thing about that is the caterpillars in my driveway. Oh, wow. In this season. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. And the caterpillars, they can remain a caterpillar with the, with the chance of getting stepped on at any moment in time. Wow. Or, or they can come out of their norm and go through the process and become more excellent. In the metamorphosis. Through the metamorphosis. By the renewing of their mind yes. and become a butterfly. The change. The change. Some of us keep fighting the cocoon. Mm. <laughs> Don't Ooh. preach, Apostle. Don't do it. But what? Tell us. Um, <laughs> But now we fight. We fight in the cocoon. We're fighting what God has placed in front of us. In order for this seed to grow, it has to be buried. Oh, it has wow. to go to a period of darkness. In order for this 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 this, this caterpillar to become a butterfly, mm. it has to go through this season of darkness, through mm. this season of bondage. And in mm. the process of going through that, a man change takes place, and then they come out a butterfly. But many times we go in a caterpillar and come out a caterpillar. Because, wow! Because we resisted. The change that God was trying to, oh my God, wow. to, to manifest in our life. And so we come out more warped than we were when we went in. Wow. You say we go in a caterpillar, a caterpillar. And still come out a caterpillar. But guess what? Scientifically, that caterpillar is stronger going in when it's first birthed mm -hmm. as a caterpillar. Because after it's fought and gone through and fought the process, it's a lot weaker mm -hmm. than at first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now it's a weak caterpillar, barely hanging on. Barely hanging on. But the weakness, the weak, the weakness is there only momentarily. Because as the caterpillar allows the transformation to take, to place, take place and, and becomes a butterfly, now wow. the caterpillar was, that was weak becomes stronger through the wrestling of breaking out of what held it captive. Now, don't and, tell me that's, that was the caterpillar's purpose. Yeah, to it go through. It was fulfilling purpose. Yeah, to go through. It was, it was fulfilling purpose to go through. To be Woo! bound. Jesus! To be ostracized. To be hanging from a tree. Jesus. Or a bush or a limb. Or whatever it is. Uh, yeah, yeah, a branch. Or a branch, whatever. whatever. There, it was purpose for that. Wow. But a lot of times we fight the purpose and we go in a caterpillar and come out a caterpillar. Sister Wilson said, uh, uh, she said, people been in, a lot of people have been inboxing me about you guys. Amen. 870-727. Yeah. And you Zero. don't have to try to answer for us. Send them to us. 870-727-0061. They can talk directly to us. Yes. We, we're, we're transparent. But, you know, Sister Wilson Hey man, she's getting stronger in God. Yeah, been, you are, Sister she's Wilson. Been, she's been pushing and promoting You're our being various transformed. our various services, various events. She's been posting and posting and posting. Mm -hmm. So they're like, why is this woman standing posting this? Because <laughs> she's getting her blessing. Mm -hmm. That's why God is blessing her mind, her spirit, her life, her mm -hmm. surrounding, her family. Mm -hmm. Amen. But go ahead, Dr. Clay. Go ahead. No, that's good, though. That's all a part of temples for God. Because guess what? We're temples for God. Pastor Marlo said, I preach this, and it's in the process. Amen, Pastor Marlo. <laughs> Amen. Go ahead. Our praise and other elements of our meeting services must lead us into the presence of God, okay? Mm -hmm. So if they don't, we are just out. We're just on our own, just doing something. Mm -hmm. Yes, they may be nice. Yes, they may make us feel good, but the purpose of gathering, church, yes. is to enter into the presence of the Lord. Let me say it again. Our services may be nice. The church may be nice. Mm -hmm. The service makes us feel good. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say? Preach a sermon so good, make you shiver, have goosebumps. Chicken pox or anything. Oh, wow. <laughs> but the purpose of gathering 
It, this is a gathering here. This is a gathering on Sunday morning at 9 o'clock Central Standard Time. Yeah. Our worship celebration. If our gatherings purpose is not to enter into the presence of God, we have totally missed it. Listen, if you listen, y'all. Right now, Boston Celtics are playing Miami Heat. Yeah, they are. In the Eastern Conference. Listen, y'all, I'm a sports fan. I was in my recliner before class. If we're gonna come to class and play games, I could have watched TV. Or I could have stayed in there watching the game. We are here for a purpose. We are here for a reason. Nobody is paying us to come and teach you all. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing what I'm amen. saying? We don't have an amen Say corner it. unless somebody type it on the screen. Say it. Oh, uh, it's not about being seen or whatever. Mm -hmm. None of that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? What uh, well, we are, <laughs> we are quarantining yet and still. So these lights and stuff that's coming out of our pocket unless somebody decide. You know what? I want to sow ten dollars into the ministry, Amen. twenty dollars, and then that goes toward what we're doing. Amen. So and nobody is paying us for this, Amen. or nobody act, no no person, or oh, well, God is a person, uh, no physical being mm -hmm. asked us to do this. Mm -hmm. Amen. But we're here because God has sent us he to. He has assigned. He has us yes. He has mm -hmm. the locker room. Mm -hmm. We found. He gave us the name and everything. The locker room where foundational teaching takes place. So we need to take advantage of this and don't look at it as just another broadcast on Facebook Live, on Twitter, on YouTube. But no, we need to look at this thing or Nordic TV. We look to, need to look at this thing as our life source. Mm, a life source. I like that. As our life source, take it serious, you all, and apply like what thus said the Lord. And I guarantee you, you will see your life begin to change for the greater in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Our uh our lesson tonight was a bit uh odd for me, but as I got into it, I figured out what God was doing. So last week we ended in Exodus 25. I said first Kings, but it was Exodus 25. Mm -hmm. We were there and God had given specific instructions for Moses to raid to ask for offerings. Mm -hmm. to ask for people to sacrifice and he asked for specific things and they were really nice things perfumed oils and yeah. uh, purple and blue linen for the ephods the robes to be worn I mean all sorts of nice things gold, silver, bronze yeah. I mean expensive quality things yeah. these were to be brought in honor of God as unto God mm -hmm. so here we are going tonight and we're going to make a few points because this is yet another example of a person that we we know, two people that we know uh, in the Bible. First Kings chapter six. We're going to first Kings chapter six. We're going to start at verse one, but we're going to move down because actually the entire chapter is dedicated to direction. But there are several verses I want. It's on the lesson as well to read the entire chapter of first Kings six. To get the whole, we don't want to just read a few verses. We want to get the whole picture. God, show me the whole picture of what you're saying. So God was giving specific directions in Exodus. And now we want to see that uh, the first temple was constructed during the reign of David's son. Now, you know, we know David. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk more about him as we go into praise next week and as we go into uh, what is praise? When do we praise? How do we praise? And the different forms of praise. We're really going to talk about Brother David because he was the one who wrote most of the book of Psalms. Yes. And he was the one that we know danced out of his clothes. Mm -hmm. He was a lover of God. The, but the first temple was constructed during the reign of David's son, Solomon. We, we've heard of Solomon's temple. It was completed in 957 BC before Christ. So 957, the first temple was completed. God's presence in our presence is the only worthwhile purpose to our meetings. So God wanted them to build temples to house his presence. This was a specific place with specific directions that had to be followed to the T because this was somewhere for God himself to abide. Can you say that again? God's presence in our presence is the only worthwhile purpose to our meetings. Giving our all, where are you? 
giving our all to God. Mm -hmm. When we pouring out, Doc, mm -hmm. it's like anointed praise and worship ministries. You all can testify for yourself. Service, when we're in, just, just going to say in the building. Right. When we were in the building, yeah. God moved. Yeah. You know, his presence, he shows up and he shows out. Yeah. But it's a difference when we go all out, not just the preachers. Yeah. Not just the, the, the worship leader. Yeah. But when every, everybody just say, you know what? Today I'm going, I'm going all in today. All in. I'm I'm gonna give I'm I'm gonna give it all up. Holy I'm, right? back nothing. I'm I'm screaming, I'm hollering, mascara running. Come on, somebody. People in my house might wonder what's going on, but I'm getting it in. I'm getting it in. Shout and shoot. One shoe over here, shoe over there. We running. Listen, like whatever, God, you get it all. When those moments occur like that, I love those moments. I look for it every time we come together. When, but when those moments happen like that, God's presence is so thick. Mm -hmm. Oh my! Yeah, definitely. So. Oh yeah. the oh my God! I yes, mean, can, can it? I, I see. I see y'all. I see the thumbs in the heart. Can somebody relate to that? I see y'all going crazy on the screen. Let me jump in with y'all with the thumbs and the heart up. They can relate with them when when we just give it all to God, mm -hmm. how his presence come in. And that's what we were on the other week concerning, yes, you know, when we give God, he wanted the best of the best. Yeah. And when he did, he came in. He came in. And so we sowed special seeds if that night. If we praise him, he'll come. Many of us, not all of us, mm -hmm. but some of us sowed financial seeds according to the word, to what I gave. Mm -hmm. We sowed financial seeds on the word of God, and I believe I'm one, I'm a witness Man. that I, I I got blessed. Amen. I sold twenty dollars to be exact. Amen. But I got blessed more than a hundredfold from that twenty I sold. Did you get blessed from yours? Yeah, y'all family. I I <laughs> I've been expecting God to do exceeding abundantly above. Yes. All that I could ask or think. I that night. The spirit led me to sow two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, but I want you to understand that these are sacrifices. We give as unto God. We don't first. We we follow what the spirit gives us first. We don't do it later after we figure. Oh no, well I don't know. I can't do it. No, when the spirit gives it to us the first time, that was us. Tr the the spirit trying to help us to be blessed. Oh, uh, sister uh, Wilson said I was blessed tremendously. Amen. I agree, Sister Wilson. Bless you. God is God is pouring out. He's lining up some things in my life, and I don't want it to stop. Even uh, we went to the uh, tailor on today, and uh, I just had a special tip for her. And she was like, what's this for? I said, I don't know. I'm just sowing seeds because I want them to come back. I'm sowing seeds. I, I the, the Spirit is leading me to sow seeds, so I sow them. Yes. He said, if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. If you sow generously, you'll reap generously. Yes. So I'm sowing generously. We've always been sowers. We've always been givers. But in this season, I can't afford for God to stop whatever is coming our way. I cannot afford it. Not to give. Not to give. We can't afford <laughs> to stop this thing. I can't afford it. So at this point, I want God to pour out. It's a season of transition for us. Yeah. I just feel God. I don't know why I'm going this way, but I feel God moving us in uh, several different directions. I feel God pulling us, uh, uh, magnetizing us to different groups in the kingdom of God. Yes. Uh, different people, different mindsets, different hearts. And we can't afford not to sow the seeds that he's put in our hearts to give at this time. The things that we're sowing in, we're sowing into the equipment. We're sowing into everything, the technology people. to make to people <laughs> to make everything better because God knows better than anyone else. He knows what needs to happen yeah. to pull these things together. So all I'm saying is in this season, I know God is moving. Uh I'm like, God, I'm chasing after you. Yeah. I'm not going to get left. Don't y'all get left because God is definitely turning the curve in this season. He's definitely taking us through transition in this season. Yes. If you want to be blessed, I suggest you stay close to the fire. Yeah. Stay close because the anointing flows down. 
from the head, the anointing flows down. You're blessed by association. So God has specific directions, even in our lesson. He's showing he has specific directions for everything that he want done. He gives us directions. Mm -hmm. Why do we think we don't have to follow God to the T? Well, I don't feel like it right now. I'm not feeling it. Or Why do we give ourselves excuses to not do exactly what the Lord says when he says to do it? If God, every time we follow God's word with joy, mm -hmm. excitement. Yeah. He blesses us. Yeah. We're not doing it for the blessing. We're yeah. doing it out of love. Yeah. For it just God feels so, good. For God so loved the world. So loved. He gave. So we're giving of our time. We're giving of our mind. We're presenting our bodies as living sacrifices unto the Lord because we love him. He's very valuable to us. He's special to us. And in return, he blesses us. My oldest son, our oldest son. He just keep getting blessed. Oh my oh, God. Wow. I'll be like, uh, I'll be talking to his mama like, girl, can you okay, okay? But because uh, 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 uh. but because of what he's doing in life, mm -hmm. he's being blessed. Mm -hmm. He's not doing it for the blessing. He's doing it because this is his focus. Are you hearing That's what I'm saying? Mindset. This is he's he's trying to achieve the goal. He's on a mission. He's actually further along than a lot of grown people that I know. Don't do that. No, I mean mentally. He's ahead of a lot of grown people yeah. already. He just turned 20, a junior in college, and already ahead, yeah. shooting past most of the grown people that I know. So I'm like, God, I thank you that you've given us enough. I wasn't necessarily on that fast track that he was on at that age. So yeah. I thank God for instilling the importance into us to put it into him, to support him, to support what God has given him yes. to do. So it's very important that we have support. It's very important that we have guidance in our lives. Yeah. Don't push away the guidance when God sends it because it's sent to help get us from point A to point B. Am yes. I right? Right. So we, we praise God. We worship him, not just to feel good. Mm -hmm. We don't do it because it serves no purpose. We don't do it just because we're called the church. But there are principles to this thing. We have been separated from the beginning from God's presence by sin. When sin came in, back in Genesis, when sin came in, it separated man from the presence of God. <laughs> hey, Brother Adam said he's blessed because you sow seed in his life. Amen. 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 I believe that we did. Yeah. But the the we were separated from sin, from God's presence by sin. Mm -hmm. So this praise and this worship, the principles of it, bring us back into the presence of God. We're not building churches just to be building churches. Mm -hmm. We're not singing songs just to be singing songs. Yes, we're right. not hollering out, hollering out the name of Jesus just to be hollering out. So right. we can say we're at church. Talk. We should be calling on Jesus today. It's not so we can talk no. about it. It's so that God will show up. Yes. It's so that his presence will reign. If we praise him, he'll show up. If we praise him, he will show up. It never fails. It's a principle. Principles work no matter what. We talked about this class. Principles work. They do not change. They work the same every time. They are constant. Yes. So if we praise him, he will show up. If we praise him, he'll show up. If we speak well of him, yes. we are praising him, he will show up. Yes. When we when we celebrate him, he will show up. Yeah. He's not going to leave us hanging when we praise him. Yes. He's going to show up. Praise leads us into the presence of worship. Uh -huh. We can't worship without first praising. Mm -hmm. When we speak well of God, anybody can praise God. We've learned it. Anyone, let everything that has breath praise the Lord uh -huh. in the book of Psalms. So when we praise him, he will show up. Yes, and that's will. what we want him to do in our lives. We want God to, to move in a mighty way. We want him to change our mindset. We want him to help us to not stay in the same rut that we were in over and over, year after year. But we want to be changed from the inside out, trained, tra transformed by the renewing of our mind. So here we go to the first temple. There is a purpose for the direction, for the guidance from uh -huh. God in the first temple that was 
uh, completed by David's son Solomon, King Solomon. Uh huh. First Kings chapter six. And where am I reading? Doc? Uh, starting at verse one. And it came to pass in the four hundred and eight. 80th, 80th, 80th mm -hmm. year after the children of Israel will come out of the land of Egypt in the fourth year of Solomon's reign mm -hmm. over Israel mm -hmm. in the month Ziph, mm -hmm. which is the second month that he began to build the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Keep going. And the house which King Solomon built for the Lord, the length thereof were three score cubits and the breadth thereof 20 cubits. In the height thereof, 30 cubits. In the porch before the temple of the house, 20 cubits was the length thereof, according to the breadth of the house. And 10 cubits was the breadth thereof before the house. And for the house, he made windows of narrow lights. And against the wall of the house, he built chambers round about. Against the wall of the round, the Against the walls of the house round about, mm -hmm. both of the temple and of the oracle, and he made chambers round about. The nethermost chamber was five cubits broad, mm -hmm. and the middle was six cubits broad, and the third was seven cubits broad. Mm -hmm. For without in the wall of the house, he mm -hmm. made narrowed rests round about, that the beams should not be fastened in the walls of the house. Is that verse six? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go here and stay right there, one through six, and then we're going to skip down because this whole chapter addresses. But I want us to see some important things about this temple. In the message translation, 1 Kings chapter 6, verses 1 through 6, it says 480 years after the Israelites came out of Egypt, mm -hmm. In the fourth year of Solomon's rule over Israel, in the month of Zeal, the second month, Solomon started building the temple of God. The temple that King Solomon built to God. Mm -hmm. Y'all heard that. The, king's, the, the temple that King Solomon built to God. This was a temple dedicated to God. It was not Solomon's temple. It was God's temple. Yes. He was the servant of the Most High God. Pause. Would you build something for God? Wow. <laughs> this man built a temple. A temple ain't it's nothing little. Mm. And we can't we can hold it night. Solomon built a temple mm. for God. That takes dedication, time, persistence, de uh, dedication, wow. deliverance, money. Man, that's good. Blood, we, sweat, we, tears. That's good, Apostle, because we just talked about Noah. Noah built an ark. Man. And they call him crazy and probably every other name they could think of to address this man because it had never rained on the earth. He's out there putting together this huge boat. And they like, what's wrong with you, man? What are you doing that for? What What is in your head? And he's saying, God told me to do this. I, would, I just wanted to say that because I just got to use this word. Please don't disconnect from us. But some of us are so petty. Because, oh, wow. Because Thank you, Sister Hopshaw. <laughs> some of us are so petty because we can't bring God 10% of our increase. But wow. here this man is finna build yeah, yeah, a, beautiful temple. a temple for God. Go ahead with this description. This is good. Okay, so the temple that King Solomon built to God was 90 feet long. That's a lot of feet. Yeah. 30 feet wide. Mm-hmm. And 45 feet high. Man. That is some grand cathedral ceiling. Almost like a half of a football stadium. Yeah. It was there was a porch across the 30 foot width of the temple that extended out 15 feet. Within the temple, he made narrow, deep seal windows. I mean, everything is so meticulous. Against the outside walls, he built a supporting structure. In which there were smaller rooms. Mm -hmm. The lower floor was seven and a half feet wide. The third floor, ten and a half feet. He had projecting ledges built into the outside temple walls to support the butressing beams. The support beams. Everything was meticulous that he was doing 
for this temple for God. Wow. He didn't just say, well, God told me to build something. And he just kind of heard him a little bit and just went for it and threw something up. Mm -hmm. But everything was followed by direction to the T. Mm -hmm. Read verse 8 through 10. The door for the middle chamber was in the right side of the house. And they went up with winding stairs into the middle chamber and out of the middle into the third. So he built the house and finished it and covered the house with beams and boards of cedar. Stop at nine. At 10. And then he built chambers against all the house, five cubits high, and they rested on the house with timber and cedar. Okay, listen in the message translation, verse eight, verses 8 through 10. The entrance to the ground floor was at the south end of the temple. Mm -hmm. He didn't just put it anywhere. Everything had a purpose as to how the temple flowed for different purposes, for coming in, for going out. There were uh, three different places. You entered in, then you went a little further, and then all the way in was the Holy of Holies. Uh -huh. The entrance in the ground floor was at the south end of the temple. Stairs led to the second floor and then to the third. Solomon built and completed the temple, finishing it off with roof beams and planks of cedar. And cedar was an amazing wood uh, that had good durability and it was a fragrant wood. They Even cedar is used now. Uh, my grandmother had a cedar chest and uh, I think my brother has it now but a very fragrant and, and long-lasting wood. So the supporting structure outside, along the outside walls was attached to the temple with cedar beams and the rooms in it were seven and a half feet tall. There's that seven and a half again. Now listen to this example, to, I mean to this conversation that the Lord had with them going into verse 11. Verse 11 through 13. Can I say something before I read this? Go ahead. I'm listening to you describe what Solomon, how Solomon built this temple. Mm -hmm. So my first mind went to, was Solomon an architect? Wow. I knew him as a king. Wow. The Bible never said... We knew him as a king. We knew him as a king. The yeah. Bible never said he was an architect or he went to school or... Uh, as a mason, you know, wow. to do masonry work or to be a carpenter. Oh, Pastor, I didn't even think about that. But he just built this elaborate, I extravagant. I just knew he had a gift to hear from God. But this wow. the thing. Solomon built the temple according to what God had told his father. According to his spirit. Wow. And so if Solomon had not listened to his leader. Oh, wow. Oh, give me some on that. Give me some. Man. What? If Solomon had not listened to his leader, he would not have been able to build his temple properly. Wow. So all his time, effort, money, all that would have been wasted. wasted. How many of you all have wasted so many years and time and money in your life? Come on, somebody. Because we did not listen to leadership. We did not listen to wisdom and wow. we decided to do it how we wanted to that do it. Something else. And we wasted years and years. We wasted, we wasted some of our best years. That is something else. Not following directions. But he was able to build this thing like he did because he followed directions to the T. He didn't take nothing out. He didn't add anything to it. He did it exactly how he was instructed to do it in verse 11. And the word of the Lord wow. came to Solomon saying, concerning this house, which thou art in building, if thou will walk in my statues. Here the Lord, come on, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you building the temple? Why yeah. are you building it? Our building, if thou will walk in my statues and execute my judgment, this is God talking, mm -hmm. and keep all my commandments to walk in them, then will I perform my word with thee, which I spake unto David. It sounds like a promise. Thy father. It is a promise. Mm -hmm. Verse 12, uh, verse 13, and I will dwell among the children of Israel, mm -hmm. and I will not forsake my people. He says, so Solomon, since you obeyed the instructions, not only am I going to bless you, but, but, the I'm a, people. but the people connected to wow. you. Wow. I like it. <laughs> Woo, Lord. God, talking. 
Go see, ahead. That's what I wanted to do. I didn't want to just jump into verse 11. I wanted us Ooh, to see man. what Solomon was doing. I wanted to, as, as briefly as I could, paint the picture yes. of how he was building. Listen in the message, though. Yes, yes, The yes. word of God came to Solomon saying, about this temple you are building, what's important is that you live the way I've set out for you to mm -hmm. and do what I tell you. Teach. Mm -hmm. Following my instructions carefully, carefully. and obediently. Yes, he yes. said, following my instructions uh -huh. carefully, carefully and obediently. Uh -huh. Then I'll complete you in you the promise that I made to David, your father. You're English major, pretty much. Can then. You... <laughs> if and then. If and then. Can you help us? That's a conditional statement. Okay, can you can you give us the condition? Can you read that first part then so we can get he this? He said, uh -huh. it's important that you live the way I've set out for you to do what I tell you, following my instructions carefully and obediently. Then, on the condition of, on the condition of, if you do what I tell you to do, if you do what I've set out for you to do, come on, dog. Then, uh -huh. the condition is, if you do it, uh -huh. then I will. Then follows. Uh -huh. I will complete in you the promise that I made to David, your father. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So it's a promise in us. There but is it, a promise living in us. <laughs> there's a promise in us. Catch this. And it'll only come to life after we do after what God we've said. Been obedient. Carefully and obedient. Then Carefully and obediently. Carefully and obedient, not haphazard, not let me hear up and do this. No, carefully and obedient. Then he'll activate the promise that's already, already in us. <laughs> we were born into this thing. We were born with our gifts. Preach. We were born with our callings. We were born with our anointing. Preach. But until we carefully, y'all, when we <laughs> y'all, I'm telling you. Okay, I came in to, to Jesus years ago. I got saved. Uh -huh. I felt that thing for real. Okay, it was one thing. Okay, when we started ministry, I was following the man of God. Mm -hmm. He said, the Lord told me to do this. You know, I was doing everything I could to support him. But until ministry became real for me, until I understood that there were people following me, uh, not because I'm the first lady or the executive pastor, but they were following Kimberly. There are people assigned to my life. There are people who are watching the blessing that's coming up on me. Yeah. They are watching the thing that I was already born into that I do naturally once I carefully and obediently follow God. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Not just doing it just because I'm married to the apostle and we got to get this ministry done. No, it doesn't do any good to rush through it. But when we do it right, we're careful and we're obedient. And there's a then. Yeah. There's a then, Apostle. Ooh. There's a then. I'm completing you the promise I made to David, your father. So I believe that uh, there are some promises coming that he promised to Deacon Dennis and Missionary Dennis on my behalf, on my brother's behalf, that we're coming into because we appreciate who God is down in us. We appreciate the anointing. We appreciate the, the gifts. We appreciate the calling of God on our lives. So now we can uh, be able to come into the promise that he even gave them that their family would be blessed and, and they would be anointed and they would uh, uh, sit with great men. And my mm -hmm. mom has told me a minute and now I understand it's sitting right here. I sit right here. I understand the dreams. That she's had. Mm -hmm. I understand the calling on my life. Where at two years old, I sat on the organ and started playing with no, no, uh, uh no lessons, no previous announcement. Mm -hmm. She paid somebody to teach her how to play. I now understand that it was to come through me. I understand the ministry placed in me. For the promise to come to pass. Now I need you to go back to that because I heard, I heard, I, you right on it. But I, but I just need you to go back to that. He and, said, uh -huh. it, what's important is that you live the way I set out for you and mm -hmm. do what I tell you, mm -hmm. following my instructions mm -hmm. carefully and obediently. Mm -hmm. Then I'll complete in you the promise I made to David, your father. Pause. Then I will complete the promise I made, the promise in you that I made to your father. Listen, 
Right now, we have spiritual sons and daughters wow. <laughs> who are watching live right now. And God has promised us some things. And, and, no, no, no. Hold on. Oh, God. And we've been prophesying over your life about who you are in oh, God, God, what we see about you, and you didn't believe it. Oh, you didn't see it. God. You Ooh. couldn't feel it. Thank you, but God Jesus. is saying right now, Thank you, it's going to activate in you when you follow Thank his you, instructions Jesus. carefully you, and Jesus. obediently via the promise that's Thank already you, in Thank you, you oh my God, Thank shall you, God. come to pass according to your Father you, in the name Thank you, God. Of Jesus. Now oh, no. I don't feel bad. Because you're like, yeah, we've been prophesying to you. We've been fussing. Woo! We've been Dang. doing whatever we need to do because there is God to come. It's a the promise, promise in you. There's a promise. <laughs> There's a promise. We can't let that thing die. It'll be on us if we don't do everything we can to bring that thing to fruition. That's right. That's and right. And we are responsible for doing everything, for watering Plant seed, we're responsible for doing everything, exhausting all our resources to make sure it's not on us yeah. that that thing doesn't So I might get on your nerve, but I'm going to result, uh, exhaust <laughs> every resource wow. to make you acknowledge and see the promise that is wow. in you. Because he said, if you carefully and obedient, carefully amen. Carefully and obedient. Uh-huh. Then I'll complete in you the promise oh, I made God. today with your father. Then I will come. God said, then. listen. He will go. He gonna complete the promise that's in you. So God has placed the seed in our. Oh my God! God has placed the word in our mouth concerning your life. Listen, and he's, oh my he God! He said the promise I made to your father, and I'll personally take up my residence. Personally, mm -hmm. take up my residence among the Israelites, among your people. Mm -hmm. I won't desert my people, Israel. Oh my God! So everybody connected. You get a blessing. You get a blessing. You get a blessing. So because we were obedient, careful, and obedient to the word spoken, the promise was manifested, and so now my children blessed, my spouse is blessed, my family blessed, wow. my neighbor blessed, my community blessed. But a lot of our people are not blessed like they're supposed to, and we're not blessed we're not like because we're not. Oh my God, we're not careful. We just want to throw God anything throw and say anything. I went to church. Oh, or I God. did the Bible study. Mm. Or I gave. Or I say the devil is a lie. God said, listen, I got specific instruction on how I want you to build Teach, man. my temple. And when Teach. you build my temple the way I have placed it in Thank your life, God. then I will come in then. and fulfill and complete then. the promise in, in your life. And then. I will bless everything and everybody who is. Wow. Oh, my God, Dr. Clay. Wow. I'm just outdone because I had it to go through verse 18, but <gasps> I, we can I, keep going. We can we can go. Lord have mercy. We it's can go. Like, come on. Okay. Verse 14 through 18. I wanted to finish this thing out to where it talked about what each part was for. So where you want me to go, 14, Dr. Clyde? Dr. Clay? 14 to 18. So Solomon, verse 14 in 1 Kings chapter 6. So Solomon built the house and finished it. Oh, that's a message by itself. He built it and he finished it. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. And he built the walls of the house within with boards of cedar, both the floor of the house and the walls of the ceiling. And he covered them on the inside with wood and covered the floor of the house with planks of fur. And he built 20 cubits of the size of the house both the floor and the walls with boards of cedar. He even built them for it mm. within, even for the oracle, even for the most holy place. Mm. And the house that is, the temple before it, was 40 cubits long. Mm. And the cedar of the house wherein was carved with, with knops and open flowers. Mm. All was cedar. There was no stone seen. Mm -hmm. Okay, message translation. Stay right there. Solomon built and completed the temple. Uh -huh. We already saw that was a miracle from God. Mm -hmm. Actually, in all reality, David did a lot in his lifetime. There were some things that David was unable to complete because of some things he had committed, some things that happened that placed a stain over his life that his son had to complete the task for him. Mm -hmm. So Solomon built and completed the temple. <laughs> Go home. So what you just said was 
David couldn't complete it, so his son had to. His son had to. So that means we need to be making way for our children. Oh, my God. Oh my God. To complete the promise complete. that God has placed over us. For some reason, for some reason, there Man. have been things that have hindered, even though there may have been a vision there given from God, but the directions have to be passed down and handed over to completion. Because the parent couldn't do it. Parent couldn't do it. Wow. <laughs> Solomon built and completed the temple. He paneled the interior walls from floor to ceiling with cedar planks. For flooring, he used cypress. The 30 feet at the rear of the temple, he made into an inner sanctuary. Uh -huh. Cedar planks from floor to ceiling. Mm -hmm. The Holy of Holies. Mm -hmm. Cedar planks from floor to ceiling. It was closed in. It was uh, intimate. Uh -huh. From floor to ceiling. The main sanctuary area in front was 60 feet long. The entire interior of the temple was cedar with carvings of fruit and flowers. Beautiful mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Representing the sacrifice. Yes. All cedar, none of the stone was exposed. Wow. So much direction. So much guidance. The even I want y'all to go read this whole chapter because there is no way to address all of this. They talked about the cherubim, uh, uh, the the figures that were placed into the wall. It was so detailed, and yet I go back to verse eleven. The word of God came to Solomon saying, "About this temple you are building, what's important is that you live the way I've set out." For you and do what I tell you. So I don't care how beautiful this building is going to be. I don't care if you bring all the most expensive gold, wood, cedar, cypress wood. Everything that I told you to do. If your life is not right, it's not going to work. He said what's important is that you live the way I've set out for you. And do what I tell you to do. Listen y'all, we're going to get out of here. Mm -hmm. But God is showing us detail. Didn't he say, didn't the Bible, didn't it just describe that he wasn't no rock showing? No, none of the stone was showing. It was very specific. Only see the plants. The best of the best. Mm -hmm. the, the rocks, the stones, all that. It, 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 it was wasn't, kept to the outside. It wasn't tacky. It was all in place. Time was taken to complete the temple. Once the church matures better, I may preach that message entitled That's Stop it. Being Tacky. Ooh. Once we once we mature, we got a lot of babes. Stop being tacky. We, we have a lot of babes in Christ, and wow. so many would take offense in that, and right. the devil would use that as though I'm trying to. But no, we don't want to be tacky in our own lives. We don't do babe, tacky. Babe, yeah. when it comes to the church, oh, wow. people that are extra sensitive. Else. Yeah. All y'all do is beg for money. No, 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 no. We're talking about tacky. It can be said in the streets, and we, it has a different sound to it. But when it comes out of the man or the woman of God's mouth, stop being tacky. Mm -hmm. The enemy comes in with the foolishness. And the church at this current moment mm -hmm. is not mature enough mm -hmm. to receive a message like that. Okay. But I'm just saying in the future, y'all, we hear a message possibly called stop being tacky. Wow. Pay, pay, better, closer, be, pay better attention to details That's because... Good. God is a most holy God. He's a perfect God. He is a pure and a holy God. Amen. Amen. The purpose of this lesson was to understand how the presence of God, if the presence of God is absent from our meetings, absent from our temples, absent from our church services, we have done nothing but wasted time. We have been on our own if his presence is not dwelling there. Yes. So we build the temples for God. We built the altars for God. Everything that we do, there's a song that I love. It says, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. We are temples for God. Yes. We are altars for God. And if our minds are not wrapped around the concept of following God's purpose for our lives, we will be lost. Amen. We will Amen. be lost. God bless you all tonight. Apostle, I love that you brought this thing to life on tonight. No, God did it. We were just yes. obedient. He, he did that. Yes. Listen, you all. Amen. Listen, you all. We would not uh, cheat, you out of, cheat you out of your blessing uh, by, not, by not allowing you the opportunity to sow seed Amen. 
uh, into good ground to Amen. receive a 100-fold return, 100-fold blessing with 100-fold harvest. So I've been, we've been placing on the screen various ways in which you're able to give. Uh, right now we have, you can give by phone, 870-727-0061. You just simply just call that number uh, and leave your name, your number, and the amount you want to give, and a representative will get with you. Uh, immediately after class, mm -hmm. uh, you can give over the phone. We also have uh, Givelify. You can also go to Givelify mm -hmm. at Anointed Praise and Worship Ministries. You'll see that beautiful logo there, and you know you're Amen. in the right place. Just choose of the amount that you want to give, amen, and sow your seed. Thank you, God. Also, you can go to our website, amen. And uh, make sure you visit our website. There's a lot of information. There are various things that we have Amen. going on on our website. Go to www.apwmworldwide.org. Mm -hmm. Once again, it's apwmworldwide.org to sow your seed there. And last but not least, it's Cash App. We see this going up everywhere. Everybody has Cash App. Amen. And you're able to give at uh, Cash App dollar sign APWM Worldwide. APWM Conway. Conway, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Amen. APWM Conway, as it says on your screen. APWM Conway. And you can sow your seed there. Also, the last way you are able to give is by mail. Amen. APWM INC PO Box. 903 PO Box 903 Conway, Arkansas 72033. Once again, mm -hmm. the PO Box is APWM mm -hmm. INC, APWM Incorporated, APWM, comma, INC, PO Box 903. <laughs> I don't know why if you want to say something else. 903 Conway, Arkansas 72033. Three, three. We certainly honor God for you all uh, tuning in with us. We praise God for you. We pray that something was said or done that, amen, drew you closer uh, yes. to the Lord, amen, and put a fire under you, yes. amen, to do more for God. Wherever you are, everybody, I'm, I, I'm not naive to believe that everybody who tunes in with us uh, are members of Anointed Praise and Worship Ministries. I know that everybody who tunes in with us, amen, may not even have a church. Mm -hmm. uh, and some people who tune in with us, you may already have a church home. You just like tuning in to the teaching. And so listen, apply that word where if you go, if you have a church home, amen. apply that word at your church home, amen. Do better for God. Help you, I promise you, I promise you, your leadership will be so blessed. They will be so happy. Amen. amen. To have somebody, amen, that's doing more than, that's going the extra mile, amen. And when they reach there, right there, amen, amen, I promise you, it makes a world of a difference when leadership has a team of individuals who are working to hold their arms up and not just allowing the leadership to do all the work amen. and then, uh, and, and just enjoying the, enjoying the air condition, yes. but then help pay the, oh, oh, oh. that's it. Uh, uh, okay, so just it's not just money, but just working. Period. So whatever you're able, whatever you're doing at your church, do it to the best of your ability. God has given you a mind. Utilize that mind. Go to your pastor, your apostle, your your prophet, whoever it may be, your bishop, and say, "Listen, I do this. Maybe I can do this here to help me grow more, do more." Go to your leadership and talk with them. Amen. And you should be able to go and talk with them. So you can do more for God. If you don't have a church home, listen, look nerf no further. Welcome home Man. to Anointed Praise and Worship Ministries. We are a light in the midst of darkness. If you want to speak with us about uh, joining this ministry, you can call our office, 870-727-0061, or you can go to apwmworldwide.org slash E dash church. Mm -hmm. I hope my administrators is getting there. They might have already left already. APWM worldwide uh, dot, dot org slash mm -hmm. E dash church. APWM worldwide dot org slash E dash church. Go there, amen, and fill out the information, and we will be contacting you soon. We're going to do life together. 
We're going to grow and develop together on all levels, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, relationally, financially. We are going to grow together in the name of of Jesus. As we prepare to leave this place, let us look to the Lord. Most gracious and heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We yeah. honor you. Uh, we bless you for the thank download into our hearts thank and you, minds God. on this evening. Father, we thank pray you, right now that you restore the, the virtue that was, that was shared on tonight, God. We pour it out to your people, so we ask that you restore the anointing yes, in our Lord. lives from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. God, we pray that the word that was shared, that the people are yes, able to Lord. take hold of that seed, God, and that that seed is planted deep within and that it will grow in them and produce much fruit. In Jesus' name, God, until we yes, meet Lord. again, amen, uh, on Thursday night, praise God, on yes, Thursday Lord. night for our Bible Institute on Zoom at 7 p.m., God, we pray that you keep us in covers. And as a matter of fact, we send out a special prayer for Pastor Gooding and her husband, Deacon Gooding, yes, and the Healing Hearts Ministry Worldwide Church, God. You know the situation. You know what they're dealing with, God. So we pray right now that you will come in, that you will intervene, God, yes, and that you will form a miracle on their behalf, God, and yes, that they Lord. will come back with a greater testimony you, of God. what you have done for them. Yes, we Lord. thank you for it in advance. In Jesus' name. name. Amen. We love you all. God bless you. And we'll see you Thursday. Amen. Mm -hmm.